This is our last church. We've been on this series for, for some time now. And uh, I don't know about you, but it's been blessing us. Uh, has been teaching us and sharing with us some important information um, as it relates to the church and God uh, making the church better. And of course, we've been taught and know that when we say church, we're talking about you and I as Christian believers. Amen, somebody. Amen. And uh, we thank God for this. I, I'm going to get a good blessing. I think this is a good word for us today. Uh, starting at verse 14, Revelation 3, and unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans. Y'all see that? Yeah. Write these things, saith the Amen. It says, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. Y'all see that? I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, y'all see that? Neither cold nor hot, I will what? Spew thee out of my mouth. Lord, have mercy. Skip to verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Thank you so very much. Tell your neighbor, let the church be the church part seven. <laughs> Beloved, one of the greatest lessons one of the greatest learnings, one of the greatest revelations, greatest revealings, one of the greatest truths, and one of the greatest teachings there is about our God is that God is not fair. I hate to burst the bubble. I hate to drop the bomb on you so early in the morning. But beloved, this is a biblically revealed truth that if you can get it down in your spirit, it'll help you become a more spiritually mature believer. God is not fair. To be honest with you, beloved, you don't want a God that's fair. You want a God that got favor. <laughs> Somebody ought to help me in this house this morning. I said one more time and press rewind and said one more time, beloved, you don't want a God that's fair. You want a God that got favor. Fair means that God will have to give us what we really do deserve. Somebody ought to help me here. And beloved, you do know that because of our sin, all of us in here deserve death. But favor means God won't give us what we do deserve. Favor says God will give us what we don't deserve. Talk to me somebody. Beloved, I know you're sitting there trying to figure this puzzle out, but let me tell you again, you don't want a God that's fair. You want a God that got favor. Fair means that when you had the accident driving your car, you was already texting and driving. You was already trying to eat and drive and had an accident. Fair says your car should have been total. But favor jumped in and said, instead of letting it be total, I'm going to let it be a fender bender. Fair says that when you went to the doctor, you just knew the doctor was going to tell you that you got cancer. You hadn't been eating right. Talk to me, somebody. You've been eating pork and fat back, ham, hocks, 
chitlins, neck bones, do I have a witness here? I know it tastes good. Come on, help me somebody. You been drinking what you shouldn't been drinking. Somebody may have smoked what you shouldn't been smoking. But when you went to the doctor, instead of them saying you got cancer, favor stepped in and said it ain't nothing but a cold. You ought to tell God, thank you. You don't want a God that's fair. You want a God that got favor. Fair means, beloved, that when your spouse found out what your secret really is. Instead of them packing their bag and leaving, favor stepped in and said, I'm going to pray for you because I still love you. <laughs> Do have a witness here. Fair means that when you promise the Lord, Lord, if you get me out of this mess, come on, help me somebody. Lord, if you get me out of this mistake, Lord, I clear before God, I won't call them no more. I won't go over their house no more. I won't go down over there no more. Do I have any help in this house? And no sooner than when God brought you out, there you went. Do I have a witness here? Fair says God should have forsaken you, but favor stepped in and said, instead of forsaking you, I'm still going to forgive you. Is there anybody here that can give God praise this morning that you thank God that he hadn't been fair, but he sure enough has given you favor? Can somebody give God a favor praise in the house? Can somebody tell God, thank you, Lord. I know I don't deserve to be here but I thank you for your favor. I know I shouldn't have the job that I got but I thank you for your favor. I know I shouldn't have the spouse that I got but I show thank you for your favor. Somebody said Lord I shouldn't even be saved right now but Lord I show no thank you that you gave me your favor. Beloved I've experienced this before i never forget when I was in high school, really it was seventh grade. Some of y'all saw my picture on Facebook the other night and uh, used to be in the band and we were in the marching band and you know, before uh, you play at the pep rally or a parade or the football game, this before I played football in high school and you were in the band, you had to learn the music in the class. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And, and there was a problem in my class. The problem was in the band class was that I took the class with two of my best friends, Darren Cato and Vintez Brooks. Lord have mercy. The problem was all three of us were slap crazy. Anybody here who took a class in school with some of your best friends? Tell your neighbor, I ain't learned nothing yet. Talk to me, somebody. We, I mean, you clowned and laughed and played. Oh, anybody here know? Anybody went to a real school like I did? Anybody know what I'm talking about? And 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 our band director name was Mr. Harden. And Mr. Harden had given us what's called sheet music that you had to learn before you could play it at the pep rally. And, and the first time he gave us a chance with the music, everybody lied and said, we lost our music. He gave us another chance, tried to test us on the music, and all of us told another story. We said, uh, we didn't understand the music. He gave us a third chance, tried to test us on the music, and everybody, we told another big story. Mr. Harden, we don't like none of that music. He said, all right, don't worry about it. Next day was the pep rally, and at the pep rally, I mean, everything going well. We dancing and we rocking. The women are screaming. We over there trying to figure out how many phone numbers we go get from that side of the gym and how many we go get from the other side. Somebody know what I'm talking about. And all of a sudden, Mr. Harden dropped the bomb on us. He said, horns up. Let's play that song. Everybody looked around like, what in the world is he talking about? The horns was off. Saxophone was off. The trumpet was off. The drums was off. We made a complete embarrassment of ourselves in front of the whole school. And somebody here remember in seventh grade when you got embarrassed in front of everybody, you wanted to go hide up under your bed. Come on, help me somebody. And when we got to the band hall, putting the instruments up, my best friend, Vintez Brooks, if you ever meet him, he's always going to be the one that if anybody say something, Vintez is going to be the first one to say something. Somebody had a friend like that. And Vintez yelled out loud as he could, 
Mr. Harden, you were wrong for doing us like that. You know we didn't know that music. You know we weren't ready for that. And this is where he messed up digging. He said, Mr. Harden, that wasn't fair. <laughs> what in the world did he say that for? <laughs> Mr. Harden turned around like the Exodus. He said, fair? You don't want to talk to me about something being fair. He said, I'll show you what fair is. Mr. Harden grabbed that great book grabbed that red ink pen he opened up that grade book he said now the first time I gave you a chance to learn the song you lied and said that you lost the music that's a zero he said the second time I gave you a chance to learn the song you lied and said you didn't understand that's a zero he said the third time I gave you a chance you told another story that you didn't like the song that's the zero by the time he got through with Vintez, he had about three or four zeros already in the roll book. Mr. Hart turned around and looked at the class and said, now is there anybody else in here that want me to be fair? And one of my friends named Lenny Curtis in the back of the class yelled out, Mr. Harden, don't be fair. We just thank you for your favor. Is there anybody here that can tell God thank you that you serve a God that won fair, but he gave you his favor. Anybody here can tell God thank you for his favor. It was favor that woke you up this morning. It was favor that put shoes on your feet. It was favor that put food on your table. It was favor that kept your light still cutting on. Anybody here can tell God thank you for not being fair, but your show gave me favor. That's what this text is about. The Lord says, I should be fair to you, but you can't take it. He said, instead of being fair, I'm going to keep giving you my favor. Do I have a witness here? Beloved, you got to know what to shout about. Because the only reason we still breathing is because God decided not to give us his fairness, but he gave us his favorness. This church at Laodicea was a church that got caught up in money. That's why, beloved, when y'all bless us with gifts and, and extra gifts like you just did, I'm thankful for it, but it never go to my head. Because God have taught me that money ain't nothing. <laughs> Do I have a witness here? You, you don't got to beg nobody to do nothing for you. If you keep serving God, God will bring folk to you to bring a blessing to you. Do I have any help in this house? He said, don't put money before me. Put me before the money. Talk to me, somebody. And beloved, that's what the challenge of this church that it has in this text. That they put money, success, and wealth before God instead of putting God before it. Somebody here know when you put God in the right place, everything else will fall in place. You need to put that on your Facebook page right now. When, when you put God in place, everything else will fall right in place. Talk to me somebody. There's a few things I see and then I take my seat. First thing I see is the omnipotence. Can a church shout omnipotent? The text says this, unto the angel of the church in Laodicea, right. Watch what he says. The amen, the faithful and true witness. The creation, or rather, the beginning of the creation of God. Can the church shout omnipotent one more time? <laughs> Beloved, omnipotent means that God has all power. Talk to me somebody. And if he has all power, it means he has power to, that he made everything. And if he made everything, he can make everything do what he made everything to do. 
talk to me somebody. But the true test of power, y'all, is not what you can make happen by force. But the true test of power is what you can make happen by love. Are y'all in this house? In other words, God says, Jesus says to this church, he says, church, I've proven to you that I love you. I've proven it to you because I've given you my favor instead of my fits. And because I've given you my favor instead of my fist, I shouldn't have to fight with you to make you be faithful. I press rewind to say that one more time. Somebody didn't catch that right there. God is saying to even us right now, I've proven to you that I love you. Just in the fact you still sitting here is a sign that I still love you. Just in the fact you didn't die when you were asleep last night is a sign that I still love you. Just in the fact when you crunk up your car, it crunked up the first time. You didn't have to pump the gas three times, push it down the street, and then stick it in neutral, jump in it, crank it. Somebody ought to help me here. But it crunked up the first time. Tell your neighbor he loves you. Do I have a witness here? And God says, I'll prove unto you that I love you because I've given you my favor instead of my fist. And if I've given you favor instead of my fist, I shouldn't have to fight with you to make you be faithful. Tell your neighbor you ought to be faithful. Beloved, when you look back over your life and see how God has kept you in your right mind, you ought to be faithful. When you look at how God protected you in the accident, he protected you under the attack. He protected you and brought you through your ailment. You ought to be faithful. When you look back over your life when you didn't have enough bills to pay your bills, but yet the bills still got paid, you ought to be faithful. When you look back over your life and you were driving on fumes, somebody here know what I'm talking about. The gas hand was under the E, but you still made it from point A to point B. You ought to be faithful faithful. Do I have a witness here? When you look back over your life, you know you hadn't been eating right. You hadn't been treating your body right. You hadn't been taking your medication right. But God is still keeping you alive. You ought to lift your hand and testify to God right now. Lord, I'm going to be faithful. I see two things, y'all. I see temporary, but I see the truth. Temporary is this. The church in Laodicea was known for money, success, and wealth. They even had a medical school there uh, that was known for making what's called eye salve. In other words, to help people that had eye conditions, not so much that they could just see the world, but really so they could see their wealth. Somebody ought to help me here. In other words, it's just like America, y'all. We live in a world today where if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. Do I have a witness here? Snoop Dogg said, my mind is on my money. And my money is on my mind. Don't act too holy in here today. Do I have a witness here? 50 Cent said, I'm going to get rich or die trying. Talk to me somebody. We live in a money-driven, hungry world. And there's a lot of people in churches today and perhaps even in church today that's running after God for what he got in his hand over against what he got in his heart. But how many of you know when you get God's heart, you got access to everything he got in his hands? Are y'all praying with me? Our problem today in our world is that we got Gucci, but we ain't got God. We got Polo, but don't have no power. We got Ralph Lauren, but don't have real love. You ought to help me here. Boy, have a, we got Air Jordans, but don't know the Almighty that his name is Jesus. We got Rolexes, but we don't have no real relationship with God. Tell your neighbor, don't get stuck on temporary thrills and miss out on your long-term blessings. Somebody shout truth. Look at who's talking. He says, 
to the church of Laodicea, I'm right in the amen. The faithful, the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Jesus says, one of my names is called the amen. You thought amen just meant right on. <laughs> You, you, you thought amen just meant I agree. Amen is actually one of the names of God. The name amen is a Hebrew word that means truth. You do know Jesus is the truth about God. Jesus is God. God is Jesus and God and Jesus is the Holy Ghost all at the same time. It's called the Holy Trinity. He says, I am the faithful and true witness. I am the true witness about God. If you want to know who God is, Jesus said, just call my name. <laughs> If you want to send God a letter, send it to my address. Talk to me, somebody. He says, I am God. And then he says, I'm the beginning of the creation of God. Now, that's a play on words, y'all. That's really a prepositional phrase, which means the preposition of a noun and a verb, their relationship. The noun is creation. The verb is God. Talk to me somebody. In other words, it really don't say, I am the beginning of the creation of God. Jesus says, I am God, the creator, from the very beginning. In other words, he says, I have the credentials to say what I'm getting ready to say. Y'all want to hear what he told the church? He said, I know your works. How many of you know he knows you? He knows when you're telling the truth. <laughs> and he knows when you're not telling the truth. Come on, talk to me, somebody. He, he knows when you're giving your best, and he knows when you're giving him what's left. Are y'all in this house? Tell your neighbor, he knows. That word know is the Greek word edo. E-I-D-O. Epsilon, Iota, Delta, Omega, simply meaning this. He says, I see you. <laughs> Tell everybody on your road, he see you. Beloved, if we live our lives with that in mind, a lot of stuff we'll stop doing. <laughs> Tell your neighbor again, he see you. Everywhere you go, he's watching you. Every conversation that we have, he's watching. Are y'all in this house? He's watching us. Everybody will hook up with everywhere we go, sit down and eat. When you go to bed at night, when you use the restroom, tell your neighbor, he's watching you. Do you know what it takes to see? Here's what it takes to see. Light generates in the atmosphere form an image. Image comes through the people of the eye, the window. The people of the eye send the image to the optic nerve. The optic nerve send the image to the brain. The brain take the image, flip the image into a picture, send the picture back to the eye to tell the eye what you're looking at. In other words, you don't see with your eye, you see with your brain. Your brain is symbolic of your mind. Your mind is symbolic of your soul. Your soul is symbolic of your heart. Tell your neighbor, he's looking at your heart. And God wants to know who has a heart for the things of God. When will Jesus be number one on the agenda in our lives? He says, I'm looking at your heart. There's an old song that said, your mind is here with me. Your body is here with me, rather. But your mind is on the other side. Somebody here know that song. That's what Jesus said. Your body is here with me, but your heart is somewhere else. And Jesus says to Cherry Grove, he says to somebody today, I've been too good to you for you to give me part-time service. I've I've made too many ways for you to sit down and act like God ain't been good to you. Sit down like a knot on the log, like a tree planted by the rivers of water that shall not be moved. He said, I've been too good to you for you not to be a faithful tither. He said, I've been too good to you for you to be too tired to say, I'm going to sleep in on Sunday, but you ought to get up and come to church and give God the very best that you have. Tell your neighbor, he's been good to me 
He says, I'm looking for somebody that got a heart for God. Laodicea had stuff, but they didn't have the Savior. How many of you know stuff will run out on you? Your money, you ain't going to be able to spend it all. I don't care how much overtime you work, you'll never make enough. Somebody ought to help your boy preach up here. I don't care how many times you work on your off days. Tell, come on, help me somebody. Somebody been working on off days and overtime. You still ain't able to make the short end meet like you want to. Tell your neighbor, money ain't everything. Some stuff money can't buy. Money can buy a refrigerator, but it can't buy you an appetite to eat what's in there. Money can buy you a bed, but money can't buy you a spirit where you can rest and lay down at night. Money can buy you a Bible, but money can't buy you salvation. Some stuff money can't buy. I got to go. I see the omnipotent. But then I see the okie doke. Tell your neighbor, don't fall for the okie doke. That sounded pretty good, didn't it? Tell your other name, neighbor, don't fall for the okie doke. He says right here, he says, you are Luke Wong. He said, you're not hot or cold. He said, you're Luke Wong, and I spew you out of my mouth. What a sad indictment. Words you don't ever want to hear from God that you're lukewarm and I'm getting ready to spit you out he said you became lukewarm watch it became meaning you didn't start out that way but something happened I'm talking to somebody here somebody here you used to be on fire for the Lord be the first one at church Used to be the last one to leave. First one to give your money. The first one to serve. The first one to pray. The first one to pull out the scripture. The first one to help somebody. What's wrong with you now? He said you made the mistake that so many have made. We allow the problems of life to let us burn out. We allow the storms of life. Oh, come on, help me somebody. To burn us out. Sometimes we allow the troubles and the tests and the tears of life to burn us out. Tell your neighbor, don't burn out. And I hear people sometimes in church say, Pastor, I'm almost burnt out. I'm in too much stuff. But listen, it ain't but a handful of folk. Come on, help me somebody that's keeping this thing going. You, you ain't got time to burn out. Do I have any help in this house? God have been too good for us to burn out now. It kind of remind me, and I'm, I'm going to stop, when, when I like to grill, I, I like to grill uh, Brother Deacons, I like to grill wings particularly. And, uh, and if you know something about grill, and when you put the coals in the grill, uh, all of them start out hot like fire. But after they set, come on, help me, for a little while, some of the coals, they start to burn out. But if you're a real grill master like me, you, you, don't, you don't throw the old coals out. Come on, help me somebody. You know what you do. You, you slide them over next to the coals that's still on fire. And the fire from those coals have a way of jumping on the fires. Come on, help me. On the coals that's out of fire. How many of you know that's what church is for? That's why when you come to church, you can't be mean mugging when you come to church. That, when you come to church, you ought to have a smile on your face. When you come to church, you ought to be on fire for the Lord just in case. There's somebody here whose coals have burned out. I wish I had a witness here. And they ought to be able to slide over and sit next to you. And the Holy Ghost is on you ought to be able to jump on them and set the house on fire. Fire! Is there anybody here on fire for the Lord this morning? I said, is there anybody here on fire for Jesus this morning? Is there anybody here that got a fire burning on the inside for the Lord this morning? You ought to give God praise that you're on fire. 
That's enough. Deuces. I'm out of here. But there is one last little thing. My God, uh, he said uh, that we should uh, be on fire. Are y'all praying with me? Uh, he said uh, that we should uh, be on fire. <laughs> Do I have a witness here? Uh, I see uh, I see uh, the omnipotent, but I see uh, the okie doke. <laughs> but there is uh, another little piece, <laughs> and I'm through with y'all. I thank my God uh, that I see the opportunity. <laughs> Can a church uh, shout opportunity? <laughs> Are y'all listening to me? Uh, I heard uh, the Lord say uh, that I'm standing uh, and I'm knocking uh, at your door. Uh, do I have a witness here? Uh, if any man uh, lets me in, uh, I'll come in uh, and I'll sup with you. Uh, press rewind uh, and say it one more time. Uh, he said, uh, I'm standing, uh, but I'm knocking. Uh, do I have a witness here? Uh, I see two things. Uh, I see stand. Uh, and I see not. <laughs> Do I have a witness here? I'm the, the word stand. <laughs> it means uh, that I am available. <laughs> Knock. Uh, it means uh, that I'm accessible. <laughs> Are y'all listening to me? Uh, tell your neighbor. <laughs> Say neighbor. <laughs> he's available. Uh, and he's accessible. Do I have a witness here? If somebody that's in the house, you need the Lord. My God, he's available and he's accessible. Are y'all listening to me? I wonder here, do I have any witnesses here that need the Lord? I wonder here. Is there anybody here that need the Lord? If you need the Lord, I dare you to act like you need him. I dare somebody to stand on your feet and open up your mouth and give God praise. How many of y'all know that when you praise the Lord, Big mama them, they said, when praises go up, blessings, they will come down. Shake your neighbor hand and say, neighbor, everything you need, God got it. Wish I had a witness here. Find your one more neighbor. Find your one more neighbor and testify. Say, neighbor, everything you need. The God I serve, he got it. Do I have a witness here? Try it one more time. Look at somebody and testify. Say, neighbor, I'm a living witness. Everything I needed, God had it. I needed money, God had it. I needed peace in my mind, God had it. I needed a way out of no way, God had it. Do I have a witness here? That's the reason, y'all, Big Mama and them said, if it had not been for the Lord, 
who was on our side. Uh, tell me when, uh, where would you be? Uh, by his grace, uh, anybody know about grace? Uh, hug somebody, uh, hug somebody. Uh, say, neighbor, uh, amazing grace. Uh, how sweet the sound uh, that saved a wretch, uh, saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, anybody here been lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but thank God I can see, that's the reason y'all, I get excited about Calvary, at the cross, at the cross is where I first saw the light All my burdens They rolled away It was then By faith I received My sight Help me holler one time Oh, oh I'm happy All the day he got up with all power. Tell somebody he still got power. Tell somebody he still got power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.